Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the uh, Dobbin Buck and Jeff Korn show here. Customer success story, a game-changing partnership. So this is in the first of the series of the um, Partner Showcase Awards that are going on this week at, um, at ICON. I hope you're all having a wonderful stay. Really excited for what we're gonna be sharing with you today. Um, the work that Get You Wired has done with Jeff Korn and his team at Virtuent. So, real exciting stuff. Uh, Game-changing partnership, how two companies eliminated limiting beliefs to create revolutionary infrastructure. So, today what we're gonna look at is how we approached a certain project, the mindset and the vision that went into accomplishing something really quite incredible between agency, uh, Infusionsoft Partnership, and Virtuance. I'm Dobbin Buck. I'm a co-owner of Get You Wired Web Services. Um, you probably see a lot of people with yellow shirts running around. They're uh, the crew that are in town with me. If you're, We have a little booth up in the, uh, in the main room there, so if you want to meet them, we have Melissa Allen, the legend, Bobby Brown, Chris Jonasy, and David Quinone is here. So if you want to meet anybody from Get You Wired, uh, say hi to me or say hi to, to the crew. A little bit about us. Um, we operate out of a cabin in the backwoods of North Georgia. And so out of this cabin, we've grown from approximately a five-person team to a 42-person team in a full-service Infusionsoft-based marketing company. So it's really incredible that from a rural location where we're obviously challenged for talent and people to, to, to work for us that we've been able to pull from a local college and build a team of 42 incredible individuals that are dedicated to small business success. Um, there's a picture of us, you know, we aren't the most beautiful people, but we are very functional. I guess I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> so great. Well, out of this cabin, the amazing thing is, is that we've won a ton of awards. So this isn't about how great we are, but I like to share this because it's amazing that a culture that works together, believes in small business success, in a challenged location, can have such a huge impact on an ecosystem. We've won a lot of awards from Infusionsoft, but most importantly, awards that have celebrated our culture, our cabin culture, like the um, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine Top Company Culture Award we won two years in a row and fourth best place to work in the state of Georgia. So we've worked really hard on developing a culture that keeps our employees satisfied and like they, that they give back to this incredible company and they give back to the world. Most of these people that work for us, they don't get to come to ICON, so they don't really understand the impact that we have out in, into our ecosystem. So it's just a, a thrill to be here and it's, a, and it's a thrill to participate in this. Um, one of the other interesting things about being an agency in a rural area, an Infusionsoft partner, is that if you can imagine, we don't have a lot of opportunities for mentorship locally. So unless you want mentorship in moonshine manufacturing or something along those lines, we don't have a lot of small business geniuses in the backwoods of Georgia. So where we've gained a lot of our insights into being business owners, into running an effective culture, into growing our understanding of marketing, of Infusionsoft, has come from working with incredible clientele. So we've worked with really smart people that have brought a lot of challenging ideas to us and we've had to rise to the challenge. Um, I'd say that that is really, our clientele are the greatest awards that we've ever won and certainly the greatest friendships. So today I'm really honored and pleased to be able to introduce you to Jeff Korn who is one of our most valued partners, and not just because we've worked together for a long time, but because of the vision and the challenge that he brought to our team that helped to raise the bar to make Get You Wired a better Infusionsoft-based 
agency. So um, I'd like to invite Jeff up and he's going to tell you a little bit about Virtuance and we're going to talk a lot about what we've done with Virtuance. Hey Jeff, welcome. Thank you, Gavin. <laughs> right, <buddy. laughs> I'll steal that from you real quick. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Um, how, are we got, how are we doing today? Are we having fun? Yeah? <laughs> So um, thanks again, Dobbin. I'm Jeff Korn. I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Virtuance. And what is Virtuance? Virtu Can you guys hear me all right? I'm getting feedback here. Is that better? OK. So what is Virtuance? Virtuance, we create crazy, impactful marketing for real estate listings while also empowering real estate photographers worldwide. Are we good there? What's that? Okay, much better. That better? All right. I've got a metal bar in my back, so he said it might have been the, uh, the interference from the metal. <laughs> no joke. Um, all right, so where were we? So Virtuance, um, we are a real estate marketing partner. Um, we only service real estate agents. That's our entire market, uh, and real estate professionals. Um, we developed a, a proprietary technology that's called HD Real. HD Real is um, an artificially intelligent image processing system that's designed specifically to market real estate. Um, what it does is it allows us to produce imagery that we know has the impact that we want it to have to help sell more, more properties, more houses for more money and faster. Um, so we've done a lot of A-B testing around what that has to look like, what algorithmically it needs to feel like to elicit the right emotion from buyers in order to have impact and create the same kinds of results uh, for our, our, agent, our agent clients. Um, so just a quick, quick little bit about Virtuance. Um, we are, there's two things, um, two, two awards that I think are, are impactful here. Um, one of which is that we're an Inc. 5000 company. We were the 970 something fastest growing company in the US last year. Um, and the award that I'm the most proud of, of all of the accomplishments that we've had, is that we were awarded last year the fourth best place to work in the state of Colorado. So we share, we share that, right? Um, and I, I think that that actually is, is uh, it's a coincidence that we both are the fourth best place to work in our respective states. <laughs> However, it's not a coincidence that, that that's why this partnership works really well. One of the things that we'll be talking a lot about here is not about the technicalities of here's how we set up a campaign or here's what the lines of code look like in our integration. If you're here to learn those things, I'm just gonna tell you right now, you're in the wrong room. This is not about the technical components of what happened. This is about what it takes from a culture standpoint, from a mindset standpoint, from a visionary standpoint, in order to take your business from where you are today to where you really wanna be. And this partnership was a big piece of that puzzle for us at Virtuance. A um, couple other little stats about Virtuance. We're six years old, founded the company uh, at the beginning of 2011. Um, we have 37 full-time employees, as well as a network of about 135 photographers around the country. Um, we have been bootstrapped from day one. How many of you are bootstrapped, meaning you've never raised a dollar of capital? About half of you. 
So you know the challenges associated with that. You know that it requires a different type of leadership and mentality than it might if you had you know, $10 million of venture capital, right? Um, we also, uh, we compete in, in 16 markets currently that we operate in around the country. Um, we, we opened uh, 14 of those markets in the last two years. Um, and then last but not least, we have grown um, about 100% our revenue every year um, since our founding. Um, this is just a quick idea so you get, a, get a, a picture, no pun intended, of what we do every day. Um, we produced more than a million and a half images last year, um, all that went to market um, about $60 billion of real estate. Wow. So, why did we found Virtuance? What are we all about? There are really two reasons, and, and as we talked about with our mission statement, we want to empower both real estate professionals and real estate photographers. So, in order to empower both of them, we had to solve the challenges that are associated with both of those groups of people. So when we looked at real estate agents, what we saw before we, we founded Virtuance was that high quality photography was generally beyond their budget. We saw that the photography they did receive was inconsistent and it didn't really produce the results they were looking for. Uh, we found that logistically it was very time intensive, it was incredibly hard for them to coordinate with the actual photographer. We found that uh, they said their photographer wasn't always available when they wanted to. So if I'm a real estate agent, I don't know how many of you are in real estate or know the business, but when you need to list something, you need to list it now. And we were finding that that wasn't possible due to the infrastructure restrictions around most real estate photographers. On the other side of the equation with real estate photographers, we found that they were spending one to two hours on site at a property. They were then processing the images in Photoshop or some other program, spending another one to two hours, meaning that they could only shoot two to three properties a day. And we found that most agents weren't willing to spend more than $200 to market a property. So that really puts a ceiling on how much money these guys could make in that business. And it made it very difficult to make a living as a real estate photographer. We set out to solve all of these challenges on both sides of that equation. Um, and I think we've done a, a good job of doing that over the last six years. So what does our history look like? Brief history of, of virtuance time, if you will. Um, in 2011, we spent two years just building our core technology, which is our image processing system. We implemented it, put it in the market, proved out the concept, got 1,000 clients over those, those three years between 2012 and 2014. And we said, we think we're on to something. 1,000 clients, right? Yay, it works. Now all we need to do is scale. So how many of you are in service businesses? The majority of you, right? So we know that one of the biggest challenges in service businesses is scalability. And that's where we, we ran into some of our issues as well. So any of you ever felt like this? This is, describes how I felt in about 2014. We've got this incredible opportunity. We have people that want our product. We've got great demand. But we know that if we don't change something, we're going to be outgrowing you know, the ability, that, the demand that we, that we have there. We're not going to be able to service that demand. And we had a, a huge inability to scale. What did that look like? Well, at that time in 2014, we were doing about 200 photo shoots a week. Each photo shoot required a phone call in order to confirm the scheduling. Sometimes multiple phone calls back and forth from our client services team. In fact, we averaged six phone calls per photo shoot just to get all the logistics worked out. The average call time of those calls was five minutes. So do some quick math. And we were spending 30 minutes on the phone for each schedule of the photo shoot. You know how much we sell photo shoots for? $165. Can you do some quick math? We're spending a <laughs> half an hour on the phone, let alone the actual shoot itself, right? How scalable is this? We knew there was high demand. We just knew we had to change some things in order to get the economics to work. We had 30 photographers at that time around the country that we had to coordinate their schedules. That was a manual process of somebody literally looking at 30 calendars and trying to identify where should we put this shoot. It was like a, jig, a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle every single time the phone rang. We had no good way of providing feedback to the photographers. So the photographers would go out on a shoot and then they would go out to the next shoot. They might do 30 shoots in a week and they never find out how they're doing with those shoots. It was just too much volume for us to handle. 
the phone calls would come in, they would interrupt what our client services team was doing. So if they were in the middle of, of you know, QAing uh, uh, some photos and then the phone rang, totally derails them from that task. And we had no way of tracking photographer performance. We had our front line of our company out there representing us every day and we didn't know how well they were doing. So are these problems that resonate with you guys as far as trying to wrap your head around how we can manage a service business? I'd imagine you can already think about uh, campaigns and Infusionsoft that might alleviate some of this, right? <laughs> awesome. Well, here so we go. So we, we add all that up, right? And this is in 2014. 200 photo shoots a week, six calls a shoot, five minutes per call. You do some math and that equates to 100 hours of phone calls every week. Mm -hmm. At the time, we had three full-time client services representatives. So they were working 50 hours a week, each of them. In order to really do this at scale, we would need 10, 15, 20, 30 client services reps at, at this volume. Not gonna work. So, 2014, I came to Icon. <laughs> Recognized that there might be some things here that I could learn, right? And uh, I met Dobbin. That's not a picture of Dobbin, that's Clay, but as <laughs> Dobbin said, as Dobbin pointed out, he's better looking than, than you know, the backwood Georgia folk, right? I love you, Dobbin. Um, no, the truth is I hadn't met Dobbin yet, so I only knew this guy, and he looked like he knew what he was doing, so we cozied up. Um, what did we do, though? We met Get You Wired. I saw them at a, at a talk not that dissimilar from this one, and I, my mind was blown. Uh, my mind was blown because I saw functionality that I didn't know existed in Infusionsoft. My mind was blown because it looked like on paper that this was an answer to the problems that, that I, I had presented. What did we do? Well, literally one of my first phone calls after Icon was to Dobbin and Melissa and Bobby. <laughs> um, we sat down for a dinner when we were at Infusionsoft, or at Icon that year. And I, with Bobby and Melissa, and I'll never forget it, because I laid out my vision. Their head was probably was spinning by the time we were done with dinner. I laid out all the things that I knew we had to do, and I just loved the fact that Bobby was just shaking his head. Yeah, I think we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. And it, I, I was blown away, because I knew Infusionsoft, and I knew that these things could not be done. I'd been trying to do them forever. So we started talking. We laid out a vision for a partnership, right, and for new functionality. And there you go, 24 months later, the rest <laughs> is history, right? You guys have any questions? <laughs> For sure. What are, it's what are it's those, that easy. What, yeah. are these, what are these notepads that are... So one of the things I want to point out, thanks, Dobbin, is that it's not that simple, right? 24 months goes by, there's a lot that happens in that time. The point of this is this was our first draft scope of this project. Even a perfect partnership takes a ton of work. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you this was easy. It wasn't. Uh, but it has completely revolutionized our business, completely changed the way we interact with customers, and as I'll show you, what the results are as far as how much efficiency we actually gained. I think that our scope was, initial scope was like 29 pages long or something, right? And so what does that even mean when we talk about a scoping 29 pages long? I wanna show you just a quick excerpt. This is just one little sentence so you can get an understanding of what kinds of things we laid out together. And this is developer speak, right? As a user, I have the option to enter a promo code on the complete order page. This promo code will provide a discount on the order as dictated by the specific promo code that I enter. As an admin, I have the ability to create promo codes and assign the percentage discount values to them as well as the dates by when the promo code will expire. When a user uses the promo code, the code will apply the product discount to their order for the appropriate amount. This isn't fun stuff, right? <laughs> but in order to really develop the type of functionality that can change your business, this is the, the work that has to go into it. And one of the things that you'll hear me repeat over and over over the next 20 minutes is that part of your role as a leader in your organization, whether it's you being one person or leading a team of 100 people, is to be the visionary. It's not the partner's responsibility to come to the table and tell you how to solve your problems. You are all in this room, you run and own businesses because you have an idea of how you could make your business better. What you don't necessarily have is the technical ability to do it. 
We all know what we're good at. I don't know a line of code, right? And that's what it takes in order to make the vision a reality. So what I did is I laid out that 29-page plan, and it evolved dozens and dozens of times throughout a 24-month period. And there was nothing easy about it. How much would you say that from the original, let's just say the scoping format, um, technology forced you to vary your vision? We went into the, to the scope with an understanding of what technologies we thought were going to solve our problems. And as you can see from this slide, we had to reinvent some of those technologies. Um, you know, a, a quick example is if we said, well, we're gonna use Google Maps API in order to do this, and then we find out that we have to switch to MapQuest, right? That's a really simple example of that. But I would say that uh, easily 30% of the scope completely changed from beginning to end, right? And that's to be expected. So one thing as a point is, is that Jeff had come to us and really thought through not only his complete customer life cycle, but his vendor life cycle, and also a, a deep vision for what the user interface and the experience would be. So coming to us forearmed with all of this incredible work really enabled us to get in and brainstorm and figure out, we didn't actually know how to do everything that he requested of us. We had, to, we had it was a learning process for us, but we believed that it was possible. And Bobby Brown often goes into the realm of the impossible. Um, so it's, it's not uh, foreign territory to us, but uh, it's, it's an incredible experience to have a client that partners with us on this level of detail. It's really the way that we prefer to work because we do have people that say, here's a bunch of money, make me a bunch of money. And that's not a partnership. That's not a formula for success. So this is And we've great. been through that. I, <laughs> I, I can talk about a partnership we had prior to this one and we can save that for Q&A potentially. But as far <laughs> as what we have learned in spending hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years, and partnering with a bunch of different folks, all of whom told us they could solve our problems. So happy to, to talk about that if there's questions later on. What I wanna show you here though is what our, what our operational framework looks like. And the reason that I'm focusing on this is because this is quite a bit different than I think how Infusionsoft ever really envisioned that their product would be used. And it's certainly very different from how the vast majority of users use Infusionsoft. What this shows you is the integrations that we have built in order to make sure that Infusionsoft could scale with us and that we always had access to the most efficient way to get our information. So what you're seeing here is that on the, on the left side there, we built a customer service application. What this is is an application that allows our client services team to see the information that they need to see about a customer. That's really it. Why did we do that? Because frankly, we didn't love the user interface of Infusionsoft. It wasn't very simple or easy for a client services rep to be able to access all the information they wanted in one place on one screen. So all that that integration does is pull information out of Infusionsoft as the database and displays it on a screen with only the information that that client service rep needs to know. Right? They don't care what tags a client has, a contact has. They care what's their phone number, they care what's their email, they, maybe they care what their total lifetime value is, might care how many flames they have. We took the pieces that we care about for client services, put it on that application. We also have our own server. What's on that server? That's our proprietary algorithmic process for the images. It's also things that relate, that we're asking Infusionsoft for information back and forth from. So we'll get an understanding of what piece that plays into here in just a second. And then lastly, of course, we have our web server. So that's just where you host your website. All of these pieces of the puzzle utilize Infusionsoft for nothing else other than a database. So you might say, well, gee, why would you build, why would you pay for Infusionsoft if all it is is a place to store information? Because we see a lot of other value in Infusionsoft. We obviously know about all of the marketing automation, right? And that runs all of our campaigns. We use it for all of our customer life cycle, right? So think about, keep this in mind as we talk about the actual functionality that we developed here to solve our problems. That Infusionsoft is really that central location where we're pulling and pushing all of the information to and from. 
So I'll give you a snapshot of what our operations look like today, two years later. We have a new website. Thank you, Get You Wired. It appropriately sells our brand and value proposition. I'll be honest with you, anybody can build you a website. Not anybody can do some of the things we're gonna be talking about here. All of our pricing, as we were growing, we were only in one market. We said, we're gonna be in 16 markets, we're gonna be in 50 markets. We need to make sure that the pricing is competitive in each of those markets. So we developed pricing that was determined based on two things. It was based on the geography, the actual geo coordinates of that property, and it's also based on our service area. We're a service business. If you put in a property address that we don't service, we need to let you know that somehow. So we built that in. We also have, and we are the first and only company in our space in the country to do this, but we have built an automated real-time scheduling system so that we know, so that our clients can go online, they can see all of our photographers' availability, and they can schedule in real time. We have algorithms behind that that are looking at the, the most efficient scheduling process. So we'll walk through some of the specifics that go into that. But it's a huge logistics equation that we solved automatically. And like Uber, you can choose the best looking photographer. <laughs> That's Dobbin so. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> we built custom packages. One of the challenges we had was we would get a big client opportunity and they'd say, well, we love what you're doing, but we'd really like it to be slightly different like this, right? You know how hard it is to scale a service business when everybody wants a different service? So we productized the service. By having very easy administrative functionality on our website, we can push a button and create a completely customized user experience for that specific user. So we have custom packages based on who you are and what agreements we have with you. And then lastly, but certainly not least, we implemented a referral program. The referral program benefits both referees and referrers, and I'm really pleased to say that in the last month, in fact, we hit a milestone, which is that our referral program is, has now surpassed our most successful sales representative as being more productive than our sales representative. Wow. Tell me that's not value, that's worth everything we did yeah. here, right? Doesn't mean for a second we don't want our sales team out there. It means that we can now make them that much more effective at what they're doing because they're utilizing our referral program more than anybody. And there is one more thing, which is probably the most impactful for us from a reporting standpoint. Get You Wired built us a custom dashboard that allows us to see all of our client feedback, all of our client uh, NPS scores, and any of the ratings for any of our photographers in real time on demand. How many of you could see value in having something like this for your business? Yeah. So what does this look like? If, you, if you're interested, you can look up, there's an article actually Infusionsoft wrote about this whole process alone. Um, we have two people, two full-time people, whose job is to recruit, hire, train, and manage a team of 130 photographers. Last year alone, we accepted 898 applications for photography positions nationwide. We hired 50 of them with one full-time person. And that was only about a third of her job. How did we do that? We did that because we're tracking all the applications through an entire system that's built using Infusionsoft. Once they're hired, we can then see how well are they doing, and we can get alerts based on if somebody has gotten a poor score so that we can let them know what the problem is immediately, and we can manage in that way. That's how you can have one person, or two people in this case, managing a team of hundreds. It's incredibly effective and has saved us probably half a million dollars over the last three years. How frequently would you say that your... your small team dedicated to this is actually reaching out in regards to negative feedback. Every single day, we, you know, we have some comment, right? We're doing hundreds and hundreds of photo shoots a day. We have some comment that may be viewed as, as less than positive, right? Mm -hmm. We identified in what we built the specific ratings and the specific criteria in that feedback that would be classified as positive or negative. So it's an, it's an intelligent system. When we get that type of feedback that's below a certain score that might say something specific in it, 
we then automatically send tasks out to people to follow up with those. We receive, in the last two years, we've received over 5,000 individual pieces of feedback, and we have followed up on every single one of them. Wow. With a team of six people that are handling that. Um, this also, I'll tell you, if you have not implemented an NPS scoring system in your business, how many of you know what NPS is? Awesome. Net Promoter Score. If you have not implemented this in your business, it is as simple as one question on a survey, how likely would you be to refer a friend or colleague to your business? Based on that answer, you can predict the success and the growth of your business. And I can tell you that since we started focusing on this and we have a, an overall client satisfaction rating of over 97%, not only is that powerful for marketing purposes, but it's also a great thermometer, a great barometer, if you will, an indication of how well you're doing in your business. And that's what gives you the confidence to know that we should continue to invest in this area because we're doing well. I'm assuming you would attribute the success of the referral, pro the referral program to what you're doing there. So the two are intertwined closely, right? Absolutely. Yeah. If we're, if we're not getting good feedback, then we're not going to get the referrals. Once we have the feedback, we know that the referrals are, are going to come. So what does it look like today? 60% of our photo shoots require absolutely no human interaction. That's why I can be standing here with you today instead of answering phone calls, <laughs> right? We average two phone calls per photo shoot, and those are generally not about scheduling. It's a question that somebody might have about something. The average call time has been cut in half from five minutes to two and a half minutes because clients can now access the, the information that they need directly on our website. Instead of 30 photographers, we now have 130. We're hiring about two to three photographers every week at this point. So that number is probably closer to 140 now. Schedules that we coordinate and manage automatically in real time. Uh, client feedback, like we mentioned, is automatically sent to the photographers. When there's positive feedback, they hear about it right away, so they know they did a good job. That, that increases morale and, and uh, loyalty to the organization. We have direct visibility into photographer performance as well. So just like we showed, when there's negative feedback, that management team can speak to that photographer specifically about the problem that, that came up. And then, like I said, our referral program now generates as much or more business than our top sales rep. We increased our operational efficiency by 6x. What that means is I've had to hire one-sixth of the people that I would have had to hire to be where we're at today two years ago. I, I could talk about the numbers of what that means, but we've saved millions of dollars as a result of this type of functionality. And importantly, we did all that while maintaining or improving our NPS score. So one of the things we talk about at Virtuance all the time is we talk about efficiency, and we talk about quality. Those, that's an equation that we want to make sure both of those things are maintained. So efficiency, we're, we see, we're tracking all of these metrics. We know that we increased our efficiency by 6x. And quality is all about the NPS score. As soon as we implemented those two metrics, and that's all we talk about from a management standpoint of what we want to do to continue growing, it made the whole world that much simpler. And that was a game changer for us. So, you guys want to see what this actually looks like in real time? We'll show you uh, this website. <laughs> yeah? All right. This is our, our current website. So, first off, Get You Wired developed a... Uh, just got to find my mouse. Get You Wired developed a site that actually allowed us to show off what we wanted to show off. So, front and center, you know, from a marketing standpoint, what I was attracted to, frankly, is that you can find a lot of web developers out there, and as soon as you start to explain your business to them, you can just get the, the sense that they don't quite understand the business components. They know how to code, right? What's great about an agency, and I learned this the hard way, is that an agency actually understands the marketing component as well as the development component. So when we talked about the vision and the ideas, uh, they understood how, to, how that actually impacts our business. So this, for example, is a tool that they developed, allows us very quickly to show somebody in real time what our product does. This is a typical real estate photographer, this is one of our competitors, and this is our image of the same exact bathroom, right? 
How powerful is that functionality for our sales team to just be able to, on their mobile or wherever, show somebody, a prospect, exactly what it is that we do right on our home screen? So that's, that's uh, just a, a quick uh, bit of functionality. Um, there's obviously all sorts of uh, content on the home page. The other thing we did is we integrated all of our contact uh, records in Infusionsoft with our website. So this is the My Account area. I'm signed in now to the account. If I had orders in here, I could see every single order. It's referencing orders and opportunities in Infusionsoft. Obviously, all of my personal information. is All this is doing is pulling the data straight out of Infusionsoft um, to come to my website. Social media integration. If I, as a client, update this, it's automatically going to update it in, in Infusionsoft so that we know where to post you know, uh, marketing updates. Order history. We're going to see a list of all of the orders that have ever occurred here. Uh, the client's going to be able to go in, cancel an order, reschedule an order, you know, schedule something, add to an order. Um, it, all it's doing is looking at the order records that are in Infusionsoft. Affiliate partner relationships. We can enter a special code to unlock certain new functionality for partners of ours. So that's what I was talking about, where if somebody wants a secret package or a special partnership package, as long as they have the code, they can enter it here, and their entire user experience on our website will change. Billing info, they can update their credit card and or add additional cards. We can support multiple cards on the same platform. And then, of course, our Refer a Friend uh, campaign here, where we have custom links that are created for every single contact. And as soon as you use that, that copy that link or post it anywhere you'd like, you're going to get referral credits uh, for anybody that clicks on that link. And then the ordering process, which is last but not least. So I'll just show you quickly so you can get a sense of what we did here, I'm just entering our office address here, Denver, Colorado. And what we're doing right now, we're retrieving pricing information, right? So in order to retrieve pricing information, we're looking at different mapping APIs to see where is that property. We're confirming that that, in fact, is the location of the property. Right then, we just sent that information directly to a photographer that is closest to the area, right? So we, we know exactly where that location is. Nobody's getting lost anymore. The pricing that displays is specific to my location of that property. So if I entered a location in St. Louis, Missouri, I'm going to see completely different pricing. That's how we make sure that as we scale, we continue to be competitive in every market we enter. If I select one, of the, I, could, I could switch to a twilight shoot immediately, I'm going to see pricing. All of that is, this pricing data is being pulled from the Infusionsoft database um, in real time. So if I want to change a price, all I do is update the Infusionsoft product and we, uh, we see the change in real time. So as soon as I select that product, now I'm going to be able to enter uh, other products. We're on 4G, right? <laughs> so this is uh, you know, additional product enhancements. This is all custom to the geo specifics of that order as well. So if we say, you know what, we don't want to offer this product in that market, all we do is change the, the descriptions of that product, and it's no longer offered in that market. If we want custom products all we, for that, that partner, same thing. We can only show certain products to certain customers. Um, so all of these attributes, not only is it based on the, the geolocation, it provides specific pricing, but all of these enhancements and the variations of these enhancements and their pricing based on location are all in Fusionsoft products in the system. So it's literally controlling all this. We've developed our own interface for the Infusionsoft e-commerce system. Um, how many of you use the Infusionsoft e-commerce system? So it isn't quite as elegant and cool as this, is it? Yeah. So really what, it, what it's showing is that there's a lot of potential with some creativity we're always talking about, oh, we're limited in this capacity in regards to Infusionsoft. My opinion is, wow, we've got something great that we can work with. We just have to have the fortitude and the creativity to make it happen. And I think that this is probably one of the coolest things that I've ever seen in regards to integrating with the Infusionsoft order system. It's super great. So all of these products, too, we can see examples of them. Um, and we're, a lot of that we're pulling directly from Infusionsoft as well. Um, so if we get through this, this ordering process, I'm going to place an order for a 4,000 square foot home. 
and go to the next step. I confirm my order and I'm gonna choose to schedule it now, right? First thing we're asking is what's the direction that the home faces? Let's say that I don't, I don't know it, right? Now, what that's gonna do is based on that, we're looking at what direction or what time of day we should recommend to this person that they shoot the property. We're looking at lighting conditions. I can choose the date range. I can say I wanna do it anytime from Wednesday through Friday of this week and show me what's available from seven in the morning to 10 at night. Show me the available photo shoot time. So I'm just gonna click on that. Everything we're doing now automatically, this takes a second because we are looking at 130 photographer's schedules. We're looking at the surrounding terrain from the property. We're looking at the direction that the home faces. We're looking at the location of all of our photographers right now in real time. And then we're suggesting the three that are gonna be the closest at that time of day to that property. As soon as I click on one of these photographers, I can see that I wanna shoot it with David Wednesday at 7.30 in the morning, select that, and I enter the lockbox information and submit it, and the shoot is scheduled. Photographer immediately gets information about that shoot, just like an Uber driver would get information about the fact that you called an Uber, and the rest, as they say, is history. So that's a quick overview of the functionality that we created. Um, in conjunction with Get You Wired. And I'm done talking about functionality because <laughs> we could talk for years about functionality, right? What I wanna talk about for the next 10 minutes is about how we were able to achieve this when so many other companies fail at trying to do the same thing. Because we have all been there, I was there before as well, where we talk about all the great ideas we have and I, in one of the sessions this morning, you know, they show a picture of all the, the graveyard of ideas that never get implemented, right? It takes two things in order to implement an idea. It takes first the vision, which most of us have, and then it takes the actual technical ability, the time, the motivation, the patience, all of those things to see it through. And what I think is the strongest piece of that puzzle to create the right environment for success is about culture. So if you come to work at Virtuance, you walk in the office, the word you'll probably hear more than anything is culture. We all love what we do, we all work really hard at it, but the reason that we are able to achieve the kinds of success we do, we are, is about culture. So um, I think that, well, I'll show that in a second. I'll tell you just a quick story. When, when we started the company, I went to startup events all over the place because there's lots of entrepreneurs there. It feels like there's energy. It's where you want to be, right? And all due respect to all those startup events, but one of the things that I was confused by was the fact that they were all talking about how much money they raised or the next, the next raise, right? I wanted to talk about doing things. I wanted to talk about actually implementing and building revenue, right? And the other thing I saw was that you'd walk into any startup office and you'd see vision boards or culture boards, right? And I'll be perfectly frank with you, I poo-pooed the whole idea. <laughs> I said, you know what, I bet I could point to anyone in this room and you could tell me the top three values of any company that I pick out of a hat, right? They're all the same. It's all the same stuff. How trite is that? I don't, I don't have time for that. I'm doing stuff. And a couple years went by, and I realized that there was something missing. And what I realized was missing was that we had a culture, but we hadn't specifically and explicitly told everybody what that culture was. And because we hadn't done that, everybody had their own view of what Virtuance was all about. That goes for our customers, and it goes for our employees as well. So what did we do? We rented out a uh, private room at a restaurant one night. We drank some wine and we put up a whiteboard and we started talking about the things that are important to us. We had 10 employees at the time and we whiteboarded out all of these things. And at the end of the day, throughout, through a couple month process, it evolved into a set of values. And there are a set of values that we live by. There are a set of values that we make decisions by. There are a set of values that were determined by everybody at the company. Um, so. It's a whole other topic we could go into another time, but I'll, I'll explain why I think that's so important for this partnership and what we were able to achieve. 
How many of you have ever gone into Infusionsoft Campaign Builder and just kind of played around with the tools, <laughs> right? Without necessarily even knowing what problem you were trying to solve. Just like, oh, let's go see what I can do, right? I think that that phenomenon, if you will, because I've been there, is the biggest problem that most users encounter with Infusionsoft. You could call it whatever you want. They put the cart before the horse. They talk, you know, they, they have a hammer, so they think everything's a nail, right? If you use Infusionsoft because you think it's a shiny new toolbox and you want to see what tools you just got, you're missing the point. Before you open the toolbox, you need to know what project you're trying to build. And I think that shift in mindset can go a long way for all of us. You know what the problems are in your business. You know that better than anybody. Don't go to Infusion, Infusionsoft to tell you how to solve your problem. Go find what your problems are and then look for, for the solution to that actual problem, right? So with that, I want you guys to tell me something, something that you've tried to do that you know is impossible in Infusionsoft. Shout it out. Does anybody have an impossible agenda, something that didn't work? Dean, you got anything? Or just everything works for you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I've been there a million times, right? Oh, man, really? I can't access that field from this place? This list it can't show up the way I want it to show up, right? Have you guys thought that, those kinds of things at some point in time? So going back to culture. So much of what we're able to achieve or not achieve is based on the way that we think about it, right? And like I said, if you came here to learn about what buttons to click and how to do it, that, you're missing the point. Because what we've been able to do is we've been able, when we have limiting beliefs, is we create impossibilities for ourselves. And there is one thing that we've done that's aligned with culture, it all is related, at Virtuance, which is that instead of talking about the impossible, Employees at Virtuance, our team members know that if you're going to start a sentence, it better start with, it would be great if. If you're starting a sentence that has something to do with something we don't have, you better start it that way. And that quick change to tell your team to say those five words can change the entire game for you. It's so simple and it's incredibly impactful. The way that we talk affects the way that we think. And if we all say, it would be great if, that leaves it open as a possibility. And that's what I did three years ago when I sat down with Bobby and Melissa to say, it would be great if, and they had an answer for me. Well, I think we can. If I had a mindset that it's impossible, I probably would have never shown up at that meeting in the first place. So, a couple things that are specific to our implementation. A few years ago, we said, it would be great if our clients could place orders without having to call us. Crazy concept at the time. Everybody told us we were nuts. It'd be great if we could somehow track the performance of all of our photographers in real time. It'd be great if we could quickly create custom packages for all of our individual client needs, right? None of these things are impossible. They're not easy, but they're not impossible. So what values are there? This is not our entire value set, but these are three values that I can tell you have had the biggest impact from a standpoint of what has led to innovation at, at our company. They are exploring and embracing change, being efficient and resourceful, and learning and improving. These are things that we ingrain in our team. We all talk about all the time. And as soon as you have a team that actually believes that these three things are important, the word impossible goes out the window, and everybody is seeking towards the same type of improvement all the time. Constant improvement, right? The pursuit of perfection. We're never going to get there, but we're always going to explore changes. We're going to embrace them when they come. We're going to be as efficient as possible, and we're going to be as resourceful as possible all the time. And we're going to know that we don't know everything that we know, and we certainly don't know what we don't know. So we're always going to be learning and improving. 
And the last thing is that there's a difference between a vendor and a partner. And at Virtuance, we talk a lot about the fact that we don't, we don't work with vendors, we work with partners. If we're working with a client, we're gonna form a partnership with that client. And what, so what does that mean? You know, vendors are annoying. They're the people who call you when you don't want them to call you. They interrupt your day and they're trying to sell you something. But like it says, I mean, at least you don't have to sleep together, right? You can get in and get out and move on with your day. Partners mean a lot more, right? We're investing a lot more. We have shared interests, we have synergy, we have common goals and incentives. But yeah, we're sleeping together. And this thing's for real. And so, <laughs> I have to give him trouble about his looks all the time, but really, I mean, this guy. So, you know, this, the fact is that we have clients who are frustrated by our process sometimes. Because if they call us up and say, hey, here's the deal, I got this and I got that, and I wanna do a deal with you. And we say, whoa, 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 slow down. Let's talk about our goals. Let's talk about our interests. Let's see if there's common synergy. And you know what? A lot of people kind of poo-poo it and say, Psh, I'm going to go call the next guy who will just sign me up, right? Well, those aren't the people we want as our clients. They're certainly not the people that we want as our partners, right? How quickly, does, how quickly can you identify someone that's a good fit or not so good of a fit? In other words, with Get You Wired, were there early, or were there early identifiers that helped you to say, hey, this is this is worth me making investment in. For, for me, the biggest piece of that puzzle was I wanted to make sure that somebody, whoever we were entrusting you know, this much confidence in, understood our actual business. They didn't just want to know, okay, how do I write that line of code? How do I build that campaign? They need to actually understand what our goals are and what we're trying to achieve. And for me, that was the, the difference, Dobbin, is that, that there was a real understanding from an early stage of this that you all wanted to know how our business ran, you wanted to know where the, the bottlenecks were for us, where the problems were, so that we could try to solve them together. Um, so that's a big distinction. So we talk about a partner, and we've invented sort of this word that we talk about at Virtuance called a vendorship, right? It's a vendor and a partner put together, and we're in this for the, for the long haul. We're gonna work together to make it, make it work, right? So what do I think it takes, having gone through this process to be successful, with a partnership like this, it's that I believe strongly that it's the client's responsibility to come forward with the vision. If you don't have the vision for your company, go work for somebody else. If you don't have the vision for your company, go work for somebody else. Because if you're the one going to somebody else wanting to pay them money to tell you what you should do in your business, that's great as a coach, it's great for them to be a consultant, but don't form a partnership with somebody just because you're looking for the answers, right? You need the commitment and you need patience. So we knew this was gonna be a long haul. We knew this was not gonna be a, a short thing. And we were committed to it. It took two years before we rolled out the majority of this functionality. There were frustrations, don't get me wrong. There were long phone calls, there were late nights. But the fact that we had committed to this from day one, we formed a partnership, we knew we were in it together, gave us the ability to have the patience to see it through. And from a partner standpoint, technical knowledge, that goes without saying, right? But I'll be honest with you again, there's a lot of folks in this building this week who have the technical knowledge to help you, right? They need to have business understanding. They need to know what it is you're actually trying to solve. What I understood and I learned about Dobbin and his crew is that you know, if you talk about living in the backwoods of Georgia in a cabin, what I saw was I saw a business that has gone through the same things my business has gone through. I saw that small business growth. I saw the passion for that, right? And I saw that there was some potential synergy here. I understood the culture. I mean, he was fourth, he was fourth best place in Georgia, you know. I, I knew four was our number. <laughs> but in all seriousness, those are, the, it's cultural. This is not about the technical capability because any one of these partners, I guarantee you, that are in this room, they, they have some smart people working for them. They can do some cool things. This is about someone you're getting in bed with, you're gonna spend a decent amount of money with, right? And it's gonna be all worth it in the end as long as you have the patience and the commitment to get through it. And then incentive. You have to make sure that you have aligned incentives. And for Get You Wired, what I recognized in this relationship was that it wasn't just the money. What I recognized was that Get You Wired was in a position at this time where they really were gonna blow things up. 
They wanted to grow. And this project for them was incredibly meaningful in order to show the world what they're capable of. And that made me sleep well at night knowing that we had that invested interest together. Yeah, he, we, Dobbin was counting on this working out as much as I was. And that's what made me confident that, that you know, we could go two years and we were going to see this through to the end. Yeah, absolutely. It was extremely important to us and we were taking a lot of pride. There were a lot of phases in this project as you can imagine. So it isn't like two years later we finally have something that's working. It was phased out and, and it evolved and Jeff was, had vision along the way and changes to make along the way, improvements into the system, you know. And the other thing about it is in the relationship. So there's the challenge and rising to the challenge and championing for our clients, but there's also the friendship that ensues in that time period, and that's a, that's a really important thing. It's the deep connection with the people that we work with, and I hope you all have that same experience in everything that you do, because why work with someone that you can't have a deep and meaningful relationship with? I like to have a great experience and treat the guy at my gas station with respect. You know, everybody I touch in my life, I, I, I try for that, and especially in the house, in the cabin, um, it's crucial with clients and, you know, it, a really great case study for that level of relationship and I, I can't say enough about it, yeah. That's all we got. We want to open this up to questions um, yeah, from you guys, so thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have a question? Any questions? Ma'am. We still provide limited support, but this has become so big that Jeff has an internal team which has been trained in part by our team to bring that in-house. It's very expensive for a company long-term to be consistently paying an agency, am I correct? Yeah, I think that you know this, our relationship uh, has a life cycle like anything, right? And so where we were two years ago is not where we are today. Um, we, had a, have, we have a great relationship. We continue to have a great relationship. When, we got, when it got to the point where it was apparent to both of us that we were outgrowing these needs and spending, frankly, more money than we needed to, uh, Get You Wired helped us bring talent in-house. Um, and, and as Dobbin said, we now have you know, a lead developer in-house um, and a marketing team. And uh, we, we have continued to build upon the work that we did, we, we did with Get You Wired. Real quickly, I see people leaving, but uh, and we can still do a little bit of Q&A here. I'll skip past my contact information. Get You Art has a booth upstairs. But we ask that everybody rate this session on your app. So um, because this is part of a contest, they're basing the contest on ratings of the information. So if you could kindly go to your app and put in and rate this session, then Infusionsoft can have an indication of whether this was a uh, useful uh, time spent, you enjoyed our presentation. Um, Don't rate it based on looks. All right? Yeah, well. <laughs> We've made that clear. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Sure, anyone who's ever been involved in a project like this knows the term scope creep, right? Yeah. Um, and so what we did is we started out, uh, we, we dipped our toe in the water, right? We said, what of this scope is the smallest component that we can actually get across the finish line quickly to prove out that this relationship works well? Um, and that for us was the NPS tracking, right? So that was a project that we put in place. I think that that only took um, three or four weeks to implement. Um, at a cost of a few thousand dollars, right? Um, ultimately, I mean, uh, you comfortable talking about not total absolute numbers? I prefer <laughs> to get a little swarthy and say what the cost of, uh, is of not doing it. <laughs> We've seen what it's provided, okay? It's very difficult to come up here and say, hey, let me share with a group of people that this costed $100,000 or $50,000 or $25,000 or a million. Um, but 
the thing about it is going through the process and working with a team, ultimately you should have a scope, milestones, and an understanding as you enter into a project of what you're getting into at each phase. So that's, that would be my recommendation. It's, uh, my answer to the money question is not going to be the same as any other partner that's here in this, in this facility today. Each is going to be different, but what you should get is a clear scope and indication of where you're going based on the vision that we work on together. What, I, what was most important to us is that the things we used to say were impossible, we realized that as long as we had the vision for them, there, there really was a price tag, and then we could identify, how's that gonna, is that going to be worth it for us in our business? And in every case in this project, the answer was yes, right? Dave Blanchard. A lot of the work, a lot of the work, the groundwork that was done was provided by Jeff. So as he's stated many times in this presentation, the vision, the UI, the experience was really laid out. So transposing that into technical terms and a technical scope document is not nearly as difficult for a dynamic technician and programmer like Bobby Brown or a member of his team when we have a clear indication. When we have to like break down their business and then figure out, help tell them what their problem is and solve their problem and develop the technical outcome for that, um, it's, it's well more time consuming. So in this case, it was involved, but I would say it was simply as pain, painless as it could be because of the visionary. But we did, I mean, that, that most of that work fell on us, right? Um, and that's why I've highlighted that I, I believe that is the work of the, of the you know, business owner or whoever's the project manager, whoever's in charge of that. Great. It's a lot easier for us to do that than for, for a partner. Well, ladies, one more quickly. Yes, the e-commerce user interface is custom programmed and, uh, and that was done by our designers and developers and integrated with Infusionsoft, absolutely. We are out of time, they're giving me the signal. So thank you all very much for coming. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's an honor to have you. I hope you have a, a great icon. And please, if you'd like to meet me, have another friend. Um, I'm, I'm eager to, to meet new people and uh, all the people in the cabin punk t-shirts which we're giving out up above um, in, the, uh, in the main room are members of the Get You Wired team and I know that they'd love to meet you as well. So thank you and have a great day everybody. We'll, we'll hang out. We'll hang out for a few minutes too if you guys have other questions that you didn't get a chance to ask. Thank you.